Dogey, who's going to go next then? Oh, I think it's me, Darren. Uh oh. Right, well, Keir Starmer has once again betrayed the British public. In the latest humiliation for our country, Starmer and Lamy have struck a new deal with the Mauritian government where we will pay to deport illegal immigrants arriving in Chagos to St. Helena. That's a small British island just off of Africa, 5,000 miles away. The last time that island saw such unwanted guests was when we banished Napoleon there 174 years ago. But let's not forget, Starmer heralded his cancellation of the extremely similar Rwanda plan on his first day in office and has done nothing since to replace it, nor stop the 14,000 illegals that have arrived since he took office. The people of St. Helena are in uproar over this. Their small island of only less than 4,500 people already faces pressure on its public services. So has this got to be the worst trade deal of all time? Why is Keir Starmer so determined to sell us out and turn us into a dumping ground for illegal immigrants? Mm. Andy, how can Starmer, sorry, straight over to you, how can Keir Starmer get away with creating a, a Rwanda-style deal? I know it's temporary, but how can he do that when he has removed any deterrence from our own country? Well, it is temporary and it is completely different. And also, uh, it... The Rwanda policy was a complete failure. Firstly, because it manifestly was not a deterrent. I've said this so many times on this channel. It was not a deterrent. It was said, a deterrent. Of course it was. But there's no evidence that it was. No, it absolutely was. No, Look at not. the 14,000 people that have come here since that, he got into office. It's more than the whole seven months prior in the Tory government. Of course no, it was a deterrent. No, no, well, people were fleeing you, to Southern Ireland, Andy. You know, you know as well as I do that part of it is seasonal, right? So more people come in the summer who have just come no, across the summer. Well, well, no, was no, prime no, minister the highest the day, no, 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 the 20, highest day's crossings was October the 2nd. Do we or really, maybe the fourth. Let's be serious, right? So 25% more people came in 2022 versus 20, 24 year to date, right? So I just don't, I don't think people are standing on the beaches in Calais going, oh, is a Labour government going to get it? Andy, not there were people being interviewed on those beaches it's, who said, yes, I can't wait for Keir Starmer to become Prime Minister. Not, well, it's, it's quite easy. It's to anecdotal for sure. It's, anecdo it's, it's anecdotal it's for anecdotal sure. But space. it is. But if there's one of them, there's thousands more of them. But, I mean, that, that's how it goes. That's not how... That's, of course it is. There's well, a well, simple is. argument here. Where's the benefit for the United Kingdom in all there this? There is none. There's zero. This is the key point. That should be the first and main priority of Keir Starmer, and there's no benefit to the United Kingdom. They say it's to protect our territorial waters. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, it's, it's, it's a joke. Waters, As I said, it is... Handed over for yeah, absolutely it sweet I'm trying to work out what you... Are you annoyed about the cost? Because if it's the, the cost, the, it's 1% well, of the Rwanda scheme. Well, it's 1% we don't need to pay. It. We don't need to buy but hang on, that. But it's last, not ours anymore. Well, but, the, but last week, people... Or two weeks ago, when the announcement was made about the Chagall Silence, people were upset about the fact we were giving it up. Yes, and I now, am. But now we've but given now, it up, Andy. How does it make sense no, that we're paying over this money for them to sort it it's out? It's a temporary arrangement during the transition phase. So we currently are still the custodians of the Chagall Silence, and for as long as we are, we will bear this burden, and when we're not, we won't. But we haven't been up until this point in time when we've decided to hand... It doesn't make any sense. So we've decided to get rid of these islands, get, surrender our territory, and then at the same time we'll go, we're going to pay you for the privilege of that. Oh, and by the way, anyone that decides to come here in the meantime is going to go to British territory 5,000 miles away. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense, Andy. Exactly. If there's a will to do this, there's a will to do it, a Rwanda-style deal for What I would say, Emma, is have the people of St Helena been actually asked about this, whether or not they're happy with this, and also, can we send Andy and the illegal migrants <laughs> to, <their laughs> yes. to St Helena? No, seriously, are these decisions island. being made by Starmer? Are they being made by the uber clown of all of the clowns, uh, David Lammy, in his trainers? Because yeah. I think, seriously, I mean, lots of what, sorry, but lots of what Labour have done in the first few months is laughable, but it is reversible, like giving back, you know, stopping our pensioners from freezing, things like that. But this kind of stuff is serious and it is irreversible. Giving back the Chagall Silence with absolutely no consultation, no public discussion, it's so Consultation damaging. of who? Are you suggesting we should have a referendum on this? You don't think we should have had a discussion about that? You don't no. think it should have been in the manifesto? No. You think it was just, we all just woke up and that's what David Lamy had decided to do? Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I actually do. Okay. Come on, Andy. You have to admit, Andy. Andy, come on. Listen. No. Hang on. One second. One second. You must admit this is the worst trade deal in British history. Come on. You can't see any. What's the benefit for us? It's so irrelevant. The US. Would you say that about the Falkland Islands? Would you say that? No. Which is a completely different. No. Because that is a completely different situation. It's completely different. Obviously, I would not say that. They didn't even have the respect to talk to the Chagossians about it. The the. The United what States Secretary, the Secretary of who? You. <laughs> the Secretary. <laughs> come on. The Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, said this is a win for diplomacy, right? So the US are happy. I mean, I wouldn't trust Joe right, Biden's yeah, administration yeah, yeah. with anything, quite okay. frankly. But yes, I see what you're saying. Oh, good. The US are happy. That's all right. Oh, well, exactly. Yeah. Well, are we a sort of? Well, should, do you think we should? The US. We're think a we declining should nation. The United States or not? Well, I don't think we should be a little puppet. Like for that Thatcher, so, Thatcher well, still went to the Falklands yeah. after Reagan asked yeah, her not to. She true. had some balls, yeah. ironically. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're going to do it. Lucy Connolly was jailed for 31 months on Thursday following a tweet that she posted in the aftermath of the tragic attacks in Southport in July. There was no clear evidence that this directly incited violence. It certainly wouldn't have met the test for incitement in the US, for example. This indicates to me that this was a punishment for a thought as opposed to a punishment for the consequences of that thought, make no mistake, this crackdown on thought crime in the United Kingdom is far more dangerous to this country than any tweet possibly could be. Now, for starters, it just doesn't work. There has never been an example in human history of an idea being eliminated because a government stopped the expression of that mm. idea. But moreover, and I think something which has gone unsaid recently, this is reflective of a country that has lost complete confidence in itself. We used to trust individuals and communities with words because we had a strong sense of values that we knew would endure whether or not someone said good things or bad things. Now we outsource that responsibility to an increasingly authoritarian government. This hate speech regime in the United Kingdom hasn't worked and it needs to be dismantled. The question is, is there a leader on the right with the courage and with the intellect to make that case? Mm. Well, I'm happy to be Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> too, many the the, too many skeletons in the... Too many skeletons in the... Oh, 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 my skeletons are in the public domain. Thank you very much. I, Andy, you've got yeah. to have some strong words about that, surely. Well, I think 31 months, two and a half years, that is, that is a severe mm -hmm. sentence. I think it's too severe. Not proportionate, um, then. I don't think it's proportionate. Um, I do think, though, two things. Firstly, that... We do need to have rules and guardrails around hate speech in Britain. I do. I don't think it should be a free-for-all. I don't think we should replicate the situation in the United States where you can say whatever you like and it's completely fine. I do think there are certain things that are beyond the pale. Now, whether or not this... I mean, clearly, legally, this met the threshold because if it didn't, she wouldn't be in jail. But what I would say is... There seems to be, uh, from some people on the right, a lot of sympathy towards Lucy Connolly. I have no sympathy for her whatsoever. She is clearly an awful person, based on what she said. She said, mass deportation now. She was calling for people to set fire to a hotel with migrants in it. We should have absolutely no sympathy with that. Whether or not she should go to jail for two and a half years for saying that is... A different I, question. I, I just think, though, Andy, at a time when Labour are telling us that the Tories have left them with a really horrible mess when it comes to the prison situation... Which they have. ...and you had, over recent weeks, a teenager cleared of all charges after stabbing a man on board a London train because he said he claimed it was in self-defence yep. and he got away with it. There was, has been no arrest on the... when it com, ..or no charge, rather, when it comes to the Manchester airport yep. in which a woman was hit so hard that she had lacerations across her face, a police officer... And there were protesters going through London wearing, uh, carrying I Love Hezbollah, a terrorist, a prescribed terrorist organisation, placards. Nothing has happened to them as of yet. But we said that we need to be vin uh, completely 
vindictive in our approach when it comes to anyone that said anything during those that weeks after the Southport massacre. And I think it is that's the word to use. This is vindictive. It's spiteful. And you have ensured that carers of the elderly, you have ensured that a mother is without a child, an 18 year old boy fly, flying a flag of St. George. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. All in prison for years at a time. Do you not think any of the crimes that I've listed there, in which there have been no charges or people have got off scot free, that actually they're more severe than sending a sodding tweet? Well, I, I think there, is, there are clearly. Look, our justice system is broken partly because of a complete lack of funding. We're in a situation where there are trials that won't be held until 2027 for crimes that have been committed recently. That's mad. It's partly because we've been starved of funding in our judicial system. Uh, I come back to the point, I do think it's a disproportionate sentence. But I have no... I'm sorry, I have no sympathy sure. for her whatsoever. Terrible, terrible thing to say. Sure. Awful person. Sorry. I, don't th I think that's a red herring. The issue is the first point that you raised, and that is that this just doesn't work. The statute that she was charged under is from 1986. Do we really think that racial harmony has got dramatically better in this time as a result of having legal guardrails in place? Was it no. the Public Order Act? It was the Public Order Act. I was once investigated under the Public Order Act for <laughs> racial hatred. I think this is what really, really upsets the public, right? This is what really annoys them, because you, you've given all those examples there, and this is where we get this two-tier justice from, right? You look at what happened with Hugh Edwards' case and the man that provided Hugh Edwards with those photos. None of them went to prison, right? And that enrages people. And Andy, I know, I know you're saying that you're not justifying the, the long term that she got in, in jail. I'm not, you know, that's, that's fair. But, but it, frankly, it stinks. It stinks of the justice system that we have today. It stinks of lefty lawyers cracking down on political enemies. That's what it feels like to a lot of people in this country. We've got to have some proportionality and some sensible minds in the courts in order to provide a, a proper sentence. Yeah, and I think Will is absolutely right. This kind of crackdown on thought crime doesn't work. I think Darren's right about the vindictiveness of this kind of sentencing. But worse than that, I think there was panic. I think there was sort of a government flailing around in those weeks following the, the Southport yeah. riots. Southport was an appalling tragedy, but this is not the answer to it. This bizarre, draconian sentencing for basically sending stuff on, for retweeting stuff on social media or saying stuff on social media. Social media isn't real life. Of course it has real life consequences. But this highlighted Labour's lack of preparedness, their panic, mm -hmm. panic decisions, and as, as Alex says, two-tier policing. Yeah. And that's, what, with... that's what's, get, what's getting people so angry. I because you know what? Real criminals, real criminals who are actually shoplifting, attacking people, are not being sentenced. No. And yeah. real criminals who are in prison are being released. Yeah. I'd agree with a lot of what you said, but I would look at it another way, which is, you know, you know, you know the laws of this country. You know how things work. And she didn't have to say those things. And she so did. she said it. And people need to. And, people, and what? You know, people on the right often say you need to take personal responsibility. Well, she is now taking well, personal well, I, responsibility. I, I, I don't feel sorry for her. Well, let me just say this. Should. Let me just say this. If it were the other way round, and let's say it was a group of asylum seekers, then they want to burn down a, 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 a council state full of white English people, but we would didn't. be an outpour about that. So but we have didn't. to be honest, right? No, I'm saying I'm she just. Did. I'm didn't. trying to give a counter example to help you, actually, Andy. It would be I, a <laughs> Proposition if she had actually gone out and burnt the whole thing. Yes, it would. Herself. But I, I wanted to actually get back to Will's point because the, it, it's a slippery slope, I think, is where we're going down. It's this freedom of, it's this right. crackdown of words, crackdown yeah. of thought that is absolutely Orwellian, it's absolutely terrifying, and, and we do need to be a little less snowflakey in our country. Exactly. Right. Who 